Hey there, exciting day. This is sort of the end of that Boca warranty story, just manifest in a bit of a different way. So as you remember, I broke a Boca Voxrod, which I, I buy all of the knives you see on this channel. I either buy them or trade them with my own money, nothing gets sent to me obviously. Um, I tried that once and it didn't work out. Um, so I got a warranty replacement, or I got my money back from the warranty from that Boca, because yes, it wasn't uh, correctly. Uh, heat treated. So when the money came back in I thought well I wouldn't have minded trying another Boca Vox roll but I just couldn't find one anyway so I thought well what other things did I sort of question in the review? I said I questioned a D2 steel. So, so I looked for another D2 steel knife for about the same price. So um, I looked around and then I sort of got this interest in companion knives um, so I sort of combined that interest with the D2 and I thought well, what's a good companion knife in D2? So, I've already, my wife started opening it, but I told her, stop, stop, it's for the video. So I sent away to a fine company um, that we're all familiar with. And ordered myself one of their companion knives. And their companion knife is called... The Patriot. The first time I've seen the knife, so you'll be able to see my unfiltered unboxing reactions. So that's your little JR Industries sheath. We'll start. It's a company that seems to be making a lot of the sheaths for the um, sort of semi-custom or um, um, custom knife makers or the high-quality knife makers. So JRE seems to be the one that getting used and all this stuff, it's, like, it's all machines, uh, it's like, I don't think it's as handmade as some of the other sheets, but they're all just solid, it's good thick leather, they burnish it, it's it's fine. This one's got a bit of a drainage hole at the bottom, um, it seems like a reasonable quality leather, it's very stiff and it's got a um, just a single stud belt loop, so that's the way I chose to carry it. I could have got a Kydex, but it, ends up being, it would have ended up being more than the Vox roll, so I didn't end up doing that. This is the knife. There we go. As you can see, it's a very, 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 very small fixed blade. Fits quite comfortably in the hand. It's got all the attributes that you sort of look for in like a little outdoorsy bushcrafting type fixed blade. So I'd still call this a, it's either an EDC fixed blade or it's a companion knife. It's a lot smaller than my other sort of companion type knives. So that's like an SE, it's an SE3 there. So it's definitely more of the um, unobtrusive worn absolutely every day type knives. So let's have a look. Let's zoom in and um, it's very, very sharp. Let's zoom in and really study this thing. Because this is about 100 and, by the time you get it here, it's a $75 knife US. By the time you get it here, it ends up costing about $140. So I'll just zoom in and let's um, let's have a look at the, the overalls of the blade. So the edge is fairly nice. It's got a very sharp little tip. It's quite a thick knife. Um, they do grind the spine flat, so they start with obviously a polished over bar of D2. So you can sort of, the first thing that's jumped out at me is you can sort of see the grind where the grinding started. So they've obviously just done this, I think they use just a lot of power tools and hand tools in the shop. So um, they've obviously done this just, um, yeah, it's quite an organic process I guess. Um, just started there and you can sort of see it's kind of cut across and ground down for a nice flat spine and it is a very sort of flat bitey spine. The handle, very, very smooth. This is um, stacked black micata, so it's got a um, real sort of um, sheen to it. I think it's polished a little bit or something like that. And it definitely fits, it's a three finger knife that's a very comfortable three fingers. So it's nice round, not a super th uh, thick handle, but not too thin either. So if you look at other handles, it's about as thick as the um, SE3 knife handle on a much smaller knife, which is definitely appreciated. So this is sort of, I guess, a competitor, maybe if I was going to compare it to something from Essie, perhaps it's a Kandiru size knife, the Essie Kandiru or the Essie Azula sort of thing. It competes with that, I would guess. Looking at it up close, you can sort of see 
the just the it's the human touch. It's um like a little bit of polish there from the grinding wheel. Um, they've obviously finished the edge on a sander of some sort, so you can sort of see how it's polished off this kind of um this uh, matte surface to make it sort of a bit more high polish, just just towards the edge. Um, edge feels very very sharp. Little powerhouse logo there. Just a very nice little drop point knife. See how it fits in the sheath. Very, very snug at the minute. You can feel it's got to sort of expand or needs to spend a bit of time in that sheath for it to be really um, an ideal fit. Gee, it's in there nice and tight. The retention's very good out of box. So there we go. What else? The grind is just a flat grind. And it's a very well done flat grind. I can see that from here. It's um, got a bit of a wave in the edge, perhaps just at the tip there. But that's fine. They've just not gone all the way back to the Ricasso and they're putting that fine ledge on. But that still feels sharp there. So that's the other thing. But you never expect knives from you know semi-custom or custom makers for this price to be absolutely immaculate. It's definitely a user knife. So. And as long as you can use it, which we'll test out now. Let's find a little bit of wood here. This must be an often used sample of mine. Let's just yeah. Certainly shave wood if it was nice and sharp into the wood. Uh, I'll just do a bit of a sharpness test. Let's try this wax paper they send it with. It's a bit of a strange paper, don't, don't be too critical of the knife edge. It's kind of a bit of a damp, sort of waxy, it's not exactly crisp paper, so perhaps not the best example. Alright, let's try this tissue paper it came wrapped in. Again, probably not the best example, but that's quite sharp. It's about as sharp as you'd expect a new knife to come. Not mind-blowingly like um, cold steel sharp or anything like that, but, you know, about what you'd expect. I'll just go and fetch a ferro rod and just make sure it strikes a ferro rod off that spine. I think we all know what it's going to, but just bear with me. Go through the motions. Oh yeah, it probably digs them in and leaves them that, does that whole thing where they sit there smouldering for a little bit. Wowee, that is a very sharp spine. Very nice. Whew, that smells like smoke. So the D2 steel is kind of what I'm looking at here to see if it's a, um, a worthwhile investment. Um, and yeah, we'll see how it goes over the next couple of weeks testing. I'll be wearing it on my hip in its little sheath whenever I'm around the house, I think. I'll be doing a full review in the next little while. So it's the LT Wright Patriot Everyday Carry or Companion Knife. Thanks for watching, dudes. I'll put all the specs in the text below, perhaps, if you're interested. But it's just a small knife, <laughs> I guess. That's next to American Lawman. This is it next to its, um, this is the other LT right knife I have, the Genesis, so that's a pretty good little pair and I think it's kind of like what it's made, what it is in their minds when they when they made it, it's sort of like a little, this is your main knife and this is your little, your little fiddle knife sort of thing. So there you go, it's an A2 steel and that's a D2 steel, so don't happen to B2 and C2 but I skipped a couple and went straight to D. Alright. It's actually about the same thickness as the Genesis, so 
pretty cool. It's definitely going to be a little tough, a tough little knife, I would suspect. All right, that'll do us for now. It's about all I've got to say. So thanks for watching, dudes. I'll see you later.